Number one tells us that we have a solid that has a volume of eight cubic units, and it is going to be dilated by a scale factor of K to obtain a solid with the volumes listed here. And we're looking to find that K value. So we know um, that when we compare volumes, so when we do new divided by original um, for volume, that that's going to give us our K cubed. So once we do new divided by original, that'll be K cubed. Then we'll have to cube root in order to figure out our K value. So here our new volume is 216. Our original volume was 8. So this is going to give us um, our K cubed value, which is 27. And then we will just do the cube root of each of these to find out that our K is 3. For this next one, we had a volume, uh, whoops, a, a new volume of one and an original volume of eight. So one over eight is our K cubed value. So then we will cube root each of these and get that K cubed is one half. And then this third one, our new volume is 1,000. Our original volume was 8. Again, that's our K cubed. Um, and both of those are, are perfect cubes. So we could just cube that right away, do the cube root of that right away. And then that's going to tell us that our K is equal to 10 over 2, which then simplifies to 5. And if you had just divided right away, 1,000 divided by 8 would have been 125, and then the cube root of that is 5. Number two, a solid has a volume of 7 cubic units. And then we've got this equation here that represents the scale factor by which a solid must be dilated to obtain the new volume, select all the points that are on the graph of this equation. So um, <clears throat> so K is um, our output or our Y value. Okay, so this is going to be our second value. And then our V is what's being plugged in. So we're going to plug in this first number, okay, into this cube root and see if it equals out to this second number. So we will do the cube root, and then I'm just going to write it horizontally here, of V, which is 0, divided by 7. So the cube root 0 divided by 7 is 0. The cube root of 0 is 0, which does match this. So when we plug in 0, we get back 0, which is that ordered pair. Next one, we will plug in the 1. So we'll do the cube root of 1 divided by 7, and that is not going to equal 1, so that's just going to be the cube root of 1 7th. So if we plug in 1, we get back the cube root of 1 7th, which is not what we have here, so that 1 does not work. Um, next one, so we'll plug in um, 1, and so then we get the cube root of 1 over 7 again, and that doesn't simplify. So when we plug in 1, we get back the cube root of 1 seventh, which is not what this says, so this is not good. Next one, so we will plug in 7. So the cube root of 7 divided by 7, and 7 divided by 7 is 1, and the cube root of 1 is 1. So when we plug in 7, we get back 1, which is this ordered pair. Next one, we'll plug in 14. So 14 divided by 7 is 2, and the cube root of 2 is not a nice number, so it'll just stay like this. So when we plug in 14, we get back cube root of 2. So that is not correct, or that point is not on the graph. Next one, we'll plug in 49, so 49 divided by 7, and then the cube root of that. 49 divided by 7 is 7, 
So when we plug in 49, we get back the cube root of 7, which is not 2. So that one is not correct. Um, next one, we will plug in 56. And 56 divided by 7 is 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So when we plug in 56, we get back 2. And that's what this said. So this point is on the um, graph. And then the last one for this one, we'll plug in 27. So we have 27 divided by 7. And um, 27 divided by 7 is not nice. So when we plug in 27, we just get back the cube root of 27 over 7, which is not this ordered pair. Number three, a solid with a surface area of 8 square units is dilated by a scale factor of k to obtain these surface areas below. Find the value of k that leads to this surface area. So remember, um, when we're dealing with areas, we are dealing with k squared. So when we take our new area divided by our original area, we are going to get back k squared. And so 512 um, divided by 8 gives us our k squared, which is 64. So then to get down to the scale factor, we'd have to square root and we get k equals 8 in this one. Next one, our new area is 1 half, okay, and our original area was 8. This is our k squared, um, and so 1 half divided by 8 is 1 16th. Then to get k, we would square root both of these, and so the square root of 1 for the top is just 1, and the square root of 16 for the bottom is 4. So the scale factor is 1 fourth. And then this final one, our original area was 8, and our new area is 8. So then you can do the work, or you can recognize that nothing changed, so the scale factor is 1. Um, but if you wanted to go through the process, you would do the new 8 divided by the original 8 is your k squared, which is 1, and then square root. All right, number 4, it takes 1 eighth of a roll of wrapping paper to completely cover all six sides of a box. So when we're talking about wrapping paper, that's going to be an area idea. So this is an area. Um, and then we don't really care how many sides of the box is, just how much it takes to cover it. Um, the box has a volume of 10 cubic inches. Okay, so its volume is 10 cubic inches. Suppose that the dimensions are tripled. So they're giving you a scale factor here. So when we triple the sides, that gives us a K value of 3 or a scale factor of 3. So how many rolls of wrapping paper is it going to take now to cover all six sides? And the wrapping paper is that area. So when we're talking area, then we want to do the original area. And then we want to multiply that by the scale factor squared when we're talking area. So we're going to do 1 eighth times 3 squared. So that's really 1 eighth times 9. So we're going to get 9 eighths of a roll, which is 1 and 1 eighths roll of wrapping paper to cover the new dimensions. Um, and then what's the volume of the new box? So if the original volume was 10, then we will multiply that by our scale factor cubed, because when we're working in volume, it multiplies by the scale factor cubed. So then our new volume is going to be 10 times 27 or 270 inches cubed. Number five, a solid with a volume of eight cubic units. So we're in volume for this one um, is dilated by a scale factor of K find the volume of the new image for the given k's below. All right, so we've got our original 
volume, and then we will just be multiplying this original volume. So I'm gonna take the original volume and write it down for each one. And we're gonna be multiplying the original volume times the scale factor cubed since we're in volume. So we'll be wanting to take scale factor cubed each time. And that will give us our new volume. So in this case, it was times one half. In this time, it was times 0.6 cubed, times one cubed, and times 1.5 cubed. So when we do eight times one half cubed, we'll end up with one unit cubed as our new volume. Eight times 0.6 cubed is gonna give us 1.728 units cubed. Eight times one cubed will just give us eight units cubed because that one won't change at all. And then eight times 1.5 cubed will give us 27 units cubed for that new volume. Next one, um, a figure has an area of nine square units so we've got an we're talking area here then it gives us this equation that represents the scale factor of y for which the solid must be dilated and so we're just going to plug all of these points in to see which ones are on um the graph so remember the first one is x the second one is y so we're going to plug in the x's and see if they equal the y value so for this one we've got square root of zero divided by nine and zero divided by nine is zero. And then the square root of zero is zero. So we plugged in zero, we got back zero. So this one is good. Second one, we are plugging in one and we're hoping to get back one. Well, the square root of one ninth is not gonna give us one. It's gonna give us one third. So this one, we plug in one and we get back one third. So um, this one would be wrong. That also tells us this one is wrong because we know when we put in one, we get back one third. So we can cross that one out right away. This one, we're gonna plug in three. So we're gonna do three divided by nine, okay? And three divided by nine is one third. And then the square root of that isn't gonna be nice. So when we plug in three, we get back the square root of one third. So this is not good <clears throat> or is not on our graph. E, we're gonna do nine divided by nine, and nine divided by nine is one, and the square root of one is one. So when we plug in nine, we get back one, which is this point, which means this one cannot be there, because if we plug in nine, we get one, not three. Um, and then the next one, we're gonna plug in 18. So we'll have 18 divided by nine, and 18 divided by nine is two. So when we plug in 18, we get back the square root of two, so not this. And then the final one in this will be 36 that we'll plug in. So we'll do 36 divided by nine, and 36 divided by nine is four, and the square root of four is two. So when we plug in 36, we get back two, which is this point, so that one's good. Number seven, Noah edits the school newspaper. He's planning to print a photograph of a flyer for the upcoming school play. The original flyer has an area of um, 576 inches squared. The picture Noah prints will be a dilation of the flyer using a scale factor of one fourth. What will the area of the new picture be? So remember for when we're talking areas, we'll take area and then we'll multiply it by the scale factor squared and then that will give us our new area. So the original flyer area is 576 square inches, and then we're gonna multiply that um, by 1 fourth squared. And when we do that, um, we will get a new area of 36 inches squared. And then number eight says angle S is 90 degrees and angle T is 45 degrees. Side ST is three feet. How long is side SU? And this one should probably tell you that you are working with a triangle. 
Um, but I'll tell you, you're working with a triangle. And so we've got one angle being 45 degrees and one angle being 90 degrees. So this is 90 um, is angle S. Then it tells us angle T is 45 degrees. And then we also have SU. So this one says ST is three feet. Um, so how long is SU? And when we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we know that it's isosceles. So we know that the two legs are equal to each other. So SU is equal to three feet as well.